I'm uh, Chip Barclay. I'm currently an adjunct professor at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Uh, I was a U.S. diplomat for about 28 years, uh, up until 2014, 2015. Uh, and one of my last assignments was as the deputy chief of mission at the U.S. intersection in Havana, Cuba, back before we had a, an embassy that was reopened uh, this past year. There, there's kind of a mix of a sense of loss and a sense of expectation that that with his passing, uh, things might be moving a little bit more quickly in Cuba. Uh, Fidel, for a long time, was kind of like the grandfather uh, at the dinner table who, uh, who just wouldn't quit. Uh, he'd be grumpy sometimes, he'd be inspirational at other times, uh, and again, a very large presence in most people's uh, being in, in, in Cuba. So he, he was a dictator, to be frank. I mean, uh, Cuba is a one-party uh, state. It's very authoritarian. Uh, he wielded power very decisively uh, while he was uh, running the country. And, and that sort of transferred to his brother. So you, you kind of have to assess him as you would uh, you know, any other authoritarian leader uh, who's passing marks a real, real change in the world. I think it, it really is up to the new administration as to whether it wants to carry forward the changes that the Obama administration made uh, in tweaking our policy. Uh, Trump has said that uh, Obama didn't get a very good deal for the Cuban people and that he would reassess some of the things that uh, President Obama has done in the last couple of years in terms of opening up to some trade with Cuba and opening up a lot of travel opportunities with Cuba. Uh, first of all, the Obama administration didn't cut a deal with the Cuban government in any way, shape, or form. Rather than a deal, the decisions that it, that it took in the last couple of years really were, were a bet that engagement and opening to Cuba rather than maintaining our, our policy of isolating Cuba would promote the kind of positive political change that we've been looking for for decades. Uh, I was there about a year and a half ago and I noticed a pretty interesting set of changes in terms of the number of small businesses that were being opened, uh, the, the kind of process of, of rebuilding Havana and refurbishing a lot of the, the old residences, uh, the types of cars that were on the road. Um, the Cuban economy has kind of had its ups and downs in the last few years, but clearly there's a process of, of economic and social change going on there. Now, again, people have this notion of Cuba as being this locked down authoritarian dictatorship where freedom of expression is, is minimal, but that's really not the case. I mean, again, this is a very vibrant society and there are lots of ways that people express themselves through art, through, through cinema even, uh, literature, uh, music. And I'd, I'd like to put travelers in touch with that kind of dynamism and particularly some of the people that I had the opportunity of meeting and, and getting to know while I lived on the island. And I'd like to get them into the U.S. Embassy uh, too because that's a, that's a new twist to the relationship uh, and the Embassy will definitely have its perspective on on where the country is going, uh, what's happening in the in the uh, human rights community in, in Cuba, what are the prospects for political reform, um, and then there are a number of journalists on the island too, that uh, longtime hands that have been there for for years, uh, that really know the place inside and out, and I think they'd be a really great uh, way for for these travelers to to get a handle on what's going on in Cuba. Uh, plenty of opportunity to see uh, this culture, that this vibrancy that I've talked about too. There, there's a lot of fun stuff to do on the island and uh, we'll put people in touch with that as well.